So in this section, we'll be talking about uh, wireless encryption protocol cracking. So that is basically Wi-Fi cracking. Now, Wi-Fi in today's day and age uses pins or passwords to normally encrypt their data usage. Basically, if you want to access the wireless access point, you need a password or a pin to actually gain authorization. Now, this authorization is done using a four-way handshake which we will try to capture using a tool called Aircrack NG. And then we will try to crack into the password using a wordless generator called Crunch. Now you can use Aircrack NG to crack WPA and WPA2. There's also another protocol called WEP or WEP, and that is not normally used these days. If you find anybody using that, you should always advise them to actually upgrade to WPA or WPA2 because WEP is actually very easily cracked in these days and people are generally punished for using WEP by hackers all around the world. Okay, so now you can actually go ahead and go into a terminal and type ifconfig to actually look at your network card name. As you guys can see out here, it's called WLO1. So the first step that we need to do to actually go into the process of Wi-Fi cracking is set up our network access card or our access point into monitor mode. So as you guys can see out here after typing ifconfig, it shows me that my Wi-Fi access card is WL01 interface. Now our process of cracking passwords is pretty simple. What we want to do is actually monitor for all sorts of access points that are nearby to us. Once we have chosen the access point that we want to actually penetrate into and find the password, what we want to do is run an arrow dump scan on it, and then we will try and deauthenticate any device that is connected to that access point. Now, one assumption out here is that the password is saved in that device and it will automatically try to re-authenticate itself with the access point. And we want to catch and log this re-authentication process, which will actually have a four-way handshake between your device and the access point. So this is basically the procedure we are going to follow. Now, another thing that you need to know before actually using this process to gain any access to any Wi-Fi is that you need to know a little bit about what the password is. Maybe it could be the length or it could be something like a specific character at a specific place. Maybe you know a series of characters. So you just can't really guess the password out of thin air. That is not how cracking works unless you have some unlimited potential of processing power. In that case, you can very well brute force it and just find the password. But if you are not somebody who has unlimited processing power and you're trying to use Aircrack NG, you need to know a little bit about the password. Also, before we proceed with this wireless encryption protocol cracking, what I want to say is if you want to get into somebody's Wi-Fi network or you want to actually test for vulnerabilities it's better that you test for router vulnerabilities than actually cracking a wi-fi password because you're more likely than not to find more router vulnerabilities than actually successfully crack a wi-fi password if you don't know anything about it if you don't know anything about the password just go ahead and run some vulnerability tests on the router itself and more often than not you will just find something you can abuse Okay, now let's talk about the two tools that I'm going to be using. Now these two tools, one of them is already installed on Kali Linux, but if you are not using this on Kali, you can also use this on any Linux based system. So what you have to do is download and install Aircrack NG, which is easily installed with the command apt-get install Aircrack NG. And you also have to install this word list generator called crunch. Now Crunch is easily downloadable by just Googling the name and the first link will be a SourceForge link and all you have to do is go inside that and install it. And once you've figured out how to install Crunch, you can make sure that it's installed. Now, once you have installed both the softwares, you can check out if the manual pages are opening up. Let me just open the manual page of Aircrack NG and show you that it has been properly installed. Now, as you guys can see, the manual page of Aircrack NG opened up and the manual page of Crunch is also opening up. So that means both of our softwares have been successfully installed on our system. Now, before we go ahead, 
let me just show you how crunch actually works so crunch is basically a word list generator what you would do is you try and generate a word list with given characters so what you can see out here is i've typed in crunch 35 so that means the minimum length is three and the maximum length is five and i've given it a series of numbers so it will use these numbers and generate all the words that are possible from length three to length five so the way we are going to use crunch in conjunction with aircrack is that we are going to use crunch to generate the word list and then we are going to pipe the word list through aircrack ng when we are actually trying to capture and crack what we will capture in a certain log file now what you want to do first is actually put your network interface card on a monitor mode now you can do that by typing in ifconfig and then the interface name which happens to be wl01 and first you have to put it down so ifconfig wl01 down now to put your interface card into monitor mode you have to type in iwconfig and you go the name of the interface and then you go mode monitor Okay, it seems I've spelled it wrong, so let me just do it once again. So that has put our network interface card into monitor mode. And what we need to do after that is we need to start up our network interface. So all we have to do is type in ifconfig wl1 up. Now, once it is up and running, you can check by typing in ifconfig that indeed your network interface card is up and running. Don't worry, it's running in monitor mode if it's up and running. What we want to do next is pretty important to the whole process. So what we want to do now is check for some services that might still be running in the background that might hamper with our whole scanning process. So we do this by actually typing in the command airmon ng check and then the name of the interface. So as you guys can see, nothing is exactly running right now. But if there were any process running, you would only add the command airmon ng check and instead of writing the interface name, all you have to do is say kill and it will kill any processes. Now, if you see any process named the network administrator, you want to kill that process first separately and then kill any other child processes. You may need to actually run this command a few times before all the processes are killed and then you're good to go. OK, so now that we have finished killing all the sub processes, what we want to do is run an error dump scan on the network card so that is wl01 so for this we go error dump hyphen ng and then we put in the name of the interface and this will start up a scan that will look something like this so after you run the error dump scan on your interface what you see out here is a result of all the access point that is found out through the monitoring mode now if you see we have a bunch of columns out here first of all we have the bss id column now the BSS ID column is basically the MAC address of all the routers that are found. Now every router obviously has a MAC address. So those are the MAC address that is tied to the router names, which is shown by the ESS ID. Then we have the PWR column. We have the beacons column. We have the data packets column. Another important column is the channel column. It's important to know which channel your router is working on. Then we can see the cipher column, the authentication. So out here we can see the encryption that is used. So most of it is using WPA2. So what we will be cracking is basically WPA2. So from this list, what you need to recognize is basically the Wi-Fi router that you want to crack into. Now I'm performing this particular test in my office and I don't really have the permission to actually go in and test them for these vulnerabilities. I'm not the security analyst of here. So I don't really have the permissions to penetrate into them. So what I have done is I have run a similar test at home using my own Wi-Fi and I will show you the results for that. But for this working example, you will see the scans that I'm running in this office. So as we intend to stay ethical, what we are going to do out here is we are going to capture whatever we find in our office for only educational purposes. But when we are doing the actual cracking step, that is the last step of this whole procedure, I'll be running it on a file that I had generated at home, as I just said, because I have permissions to do whatever I want with my own Wi-Fi and password. OK, so for this example, I'm going to pick this Wi-Fi that is called EduTracker Wi-Fi and it's running on channel number six. So what we want to pick from here is the BSS ID and the channel number. We need to remember these two things. First, the BSS ID and second, the channel number. Now, what you want to do after that is open up a new window on your terminal and log in as root. 
Now what we want to do here is run a separate error dump scan on this specific BSS ID and check for all the devices that are actually connected to this access point. Now we do this by running the command error dump ng and while we're doing this we also want to capture all the scan outputs that we actually get into a certain file. So we'll be actually storing it in a file called capture and then we just have to pass in the BSS ID and the interface. We also have to specify the channel. So let's see what the channel is one. So the channel is channel six. So that's what we want to do. And we specify the channel with the hyphen C flag. So after you have identified the MAC address, all you need to do is copy it down and place it with after the BSS ID flag. OK, so we're going to run our command out here and we just want to say our file is going to be called test out capture. Now that our scan is up and running, all we want to do is wait till someone is actually connected to this access point. So I forgot to mention this for this process to actually work properly. Somebody needs to be connected to that access point because what we are going to try and do is disconnect that certain device and let them reconnect and capture that log file. OK, so it seems like nobody is actually connecting to it. So at this time, all I'm going to do is go back to our error dump scan that we had run on our network interface and look for some other MAC address or other access point to actually penetrate into. And let's see if something has actually connected to that. OK, so oh, voila. Now what you see out here is that somebody has actually connected to this access point and his MAC address can be seen under the stations tab. Now what we want to do is run a deauthentication broadcast message on that station and deauthenticate that guy. Now to actually run the deauthentication process, all you have to do is go ahead and open up a new terminal window again and let the scan be running in the background. Don't close any scan at this moment. Okay, so the information that we need to remember is the BSS ID or rather the MAC ID of the station. Now you also want your monitoring to be running on the same channel so that your deauthentication message is being already broadcast on the same channel. So we can do that easily by going airmon ng and saying wl1 and you can say start on the specified channel. So what we want to be doing is running this on channel six. Then we want to go and use the third suit of tools that is air replay. Now air replay is used for broadcasting deauthentication messages and all sorts of stuff. Now you can see all this in the help menu also and you can do that by typing in dash dash help. If you go down you see that you can send a deauthentication message using the hyphen zero flag and that's exactly what we're going to do. Then we say zero again because we want to constantly send a broadcast of deauthentication so it's looping basically and until and unless we stop the scan nobody will actually be able to access the Wi-Fi. So it's basically like a small DOS attack. And then we want to specify the BSS ID. OK, so it seems like I forgot the whole A tag before the BSS ID and that should get it working. OK, so it seems like I have copied some wrong BSS ID, I guess. So let me just go ahead and copy that once properly. OK, so now that we have the proper BSS ID, as you guys can see, we are running a deauthentication broadcast message on that particular network access card. And now you want to run this for around a couple of minutes so that you become sure that all the devices have disconnected. Now, while this is happening, what you're doing is basically sending a DOS attack to that small little Wi Fi. And you want to catch the handshake that occurs between devices and the router that it is connected to while reconnecting themselves. OK, so now that we've let the scan run for a couple of minutes, let us just stop it. Let's stop this other scan too. Now, if I go and list out the files on my desktop, you should see that there's something called the test capture. Now, the test capture is given to us in various formats. We have the capture format, which is test capture hyphen zero one dot cap. And then we have test capture CSV. We have a Kismet CSV. So it gives you a bunch of formats to actually run your cracking on. Now, if you remember, I had told you all that I have already generated a similar file at home, basically, when I was trying to crack into my own home password. So I will be running the test on that file. 
or the cracking procedure on that file and that is the last step of this whole procedure so let me just go ahead and move into that folder so i go cd scan now, as you guys can see out here, if I list down the files, you can see a capture one dot cap, capture one dot CSV, there's a Kismet CSV and there's a net XML. So I was not lying when I said that I have already done this at home. So we are going to run our cracking process on capture zero one dot cap. Now, let me just tell you guys the password for my home Wi-Fi is sweet ship 346. So you can say that I know the entire password, but I'm going to act like somebody who only has a general idea of what my password looks like. So let's say I know that my password contains sweet chip, but I don't really know the last three numbers or letters or whatever they may be. Okay, so we are going to use crunch once again to generate a list of words that might include sweet chip 346. And let me just open the crunch manual for once. Now, if you go down in the crunch manual, what you'll see is a hyphen T. So as you guys can see, there is a pattern that is specified like add the rate, add the rate God, and then followed by four other add rates and all the add rates will be replaced by a lowercase character. Now you can remove add rate and use a comma and it'll be replaced with an uppercase character or you can use percentages which in case it'll be numbers or you could use the caret sign in which case it'll insert symbol. So when you know the length of the password and also a certain degree a few letters you can use the hyphen T flag. So that is exactly what we're going to use with crunch out here for this example. So let me just remind you guys that the password for my home Wi-Fi is SweetShip346. Now what we can do is we can ask Crunch to actually generate something that looks like SweetShip346. So what I could do is say Crunch. So the minimum length is 12. I already know that. And the maximum length is also 12. Now let me just input in the pattern. So we put in the pattern after hyphen T. So now I'm going to just show you how long it can take. So we are just going to say sweet and then put in some other rates and then also get, try and guess in the numbers. So after you put in the pattern, you want to also input which letters and numbers they could be. And I'm just going to input my entire keyboard out here. Now what you want to do is pipe this command through aircrack ng's cracking procedure. Okay, so now what we want to do is pipe this command through aircrack ng and we want to write from or rather read from the capture file. So what we go is hyphen w and then hyphen and then the capture file name. So capture01.cap and then we also have to specify the ESS ID which is given to the E flag and the ESS ID for my home Wi-Fi is nestaway underscore C105. So that's exactly what I'm going to type in. And this will start up the cracking process on my Wi-Fi from the captured file. So as you guys can see, this is going to take a long, 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 long time. And I'm not really actually going to complete it. So in this time, I'm actually just going to try and explain why this is not very feasible on a virtual network. So basically, this is not feasible because at this moment, my computer is using all four of its cores and all the memory that is possible. So what this means is on a virtual box, this is not really possible. Your virtual box doesn't really have that much power. If you are using a four core processor computer, only two of its maximum cores can be actually allotted to your virtual box machine. Above that, you can't really give it the entire memory because that will make your computer crash. So if you want to do something like this, you, it's better that you install Kali Linux as a dual boot or as your own daily driver, and then you can do this. So this is why I have not done this on a virtual machine and instead done this on Deepin Linux, which is my daily driver operating system. Now, as you guys can see, it is constantly trying to actually guess the password by actually going through all the permutations and combinations. That is basically, it's taking in all the words generated from crunch, piping it into the current command, that is the aircrack ng command, and it's comparing everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to end this because this will take a very, very, very long time. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually try and shorten the command of the, or the amount of guessing that we're trying to do. So let me just try and do that. So as you guys can see out here, I have reduced the number of alphabets that might be actually tested. But even in this case, this will take a humongous amount of time. And let me just show that to you. So as you guys can see, the test is running, running, running and running. And 
there's not really much you can do. You can just let this run, go out for a cup of coffee, and then come back. And you might still see that running. It really depends on what the password is and how much time it takes to crack it. And how much processing power you have directly affects how much time this will take. So let me just show you guys that this is taking a bunch of time. OK, so now that I have fast forwarded a lot into the scan, you can see that I have tried almost 2127608 keys. So that's more than a million keys. That's 2 million keys that I've tried. So and it still hasn't reached switch up 346. So what we're going to do is just to show you for demonstration purposes that this procedure actually works. Let me just shorten our guessing even more. So what we want to do is this time we want to just guess the numbers. So we will modify our command accordingly. So we just put in sweet chip and let the algorithm just guess the 346 part. So we're going to remove the alphabets from the guessing scope also. And as you guys can see, the password is almost immediately guessed because it, only 456 keys were tested. And uh, as you guys can see, it shows that the key was found and it's sweet chip 346. Now, let me also show you that it works with the guessing of letters just because I don't think I've justified that letters are also guessed and not just numbers. So let me make it just guess the P part that is sweet she and then it should guess P and then 346. So let me just show you that. And as you guys can see, it guesses it almost immediately after just going through 15,000 keys. OK, so that brings us to the end of this Wi-Fi cracking tutorial and also to the end of this video, which was regarding ethical hacking using Kali Linux. I hope you guys had a bunch of fun learning about Mac changes, proxy chains, and a bunch of stuff that we did, like Wi-Fi password cracking. I hope you practice these procedures and methodologies that I've taught you only for your own educational purposes and not use it to harm anybody or do anything harmful with it because let me just tell you very seriously that you can be prosecuted by the law so let's end this video on a good note by saying please practice this for only educational purposes